Now to California again. This time we'll talk with Denise. Hi, Denise. Hi, Andrew. Um, I just had a question about Jesus's lordship in our lives. Okay. And um, specifically, like once we've made Jesus the Lord of our lives, is it possible to revoke that? Um, and I'm coming from a place where I experienced some, like a lot of pain through the church and some of the wicked heart stuff. And, and I experienced where I kind of took back the control in my life. I know I was I'm still saved, but I'm just wondering about the lordship portion. And yeah. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. So. All right. Uh, well, listen, Denise. Uh, the Lord went with you. Uh, you rebelled and revolted because you should have. I mean, from what you're describing, who wouldn't revolt against the wicked heart theology? When God says you have a new heart, get away from the wicked heart theology. When God says you have a righteous heart, an obedient heart, Romans chapter six. Get away from the message that says you're dirty and distant. If the God of the universe says you're clean and close, go with him. After all, if people disagree with the God of the universe, who's right? Uh, you do have a new heart. You do have a resurrection heart. You are a new creation. So I understand that there may be way more to the story. There's got to be some baggage, some pain, some hurt. Uh, people damaged you. But look, we've all been abused. Uh, in some form or another, we've been abused by religiosity. Uh, anybody who's been around church as a concept for a decade or two or three, I mean, we've been abused in the sense that we've been told that God is in love with a future version of us. You know what I mean? I mean, come on. As soon as you do more quiet times, uh, you're going to be real good. As soon as you volunteer in the nursery and go to church more and do more quiet times and start witnessing to people and love God more and prove your love more. And, oh, man, God's going to be so pleased with you. Ooh, you're going to be something. And we've bought the lie that God is in love with a future version of us, and it's abuse, it's rejection in the here and now. And the truth of the gospel is that you're accepted in the beloved, that you're the righteousness of God, that he's, you know, you're a fragrant aroma to him. He thinks you smell great. So uh, he, he thinks the world of you right here and right now, he doesn't need to wait for some future better version of you. And so when we hear that stuff, nobody ever says it. Come on, nobody says it that directly. But when you've heard 500 sermons that you need to do more and be more and do more and be more, it, it grates on you. I mean, come on. It, it has to. You show up at church. You're hoping to be encouraged. You leave feeling like a zero because you're supposed to rededicate, recommit, do more, wicked heart, you know, accountability, get right with God, short accounts, all that stuff. It's exhausting. You know, you fell out of the will of God. You got to get back in. Fell out, got to get back in. Oh, fell out of fellowship, got to get back in. I mean, who wouldn't be exhausted? Who wouldn't revolt? So what I'm saying is, if an ounce of that, if some of that was your experience there in California, when you decided to get away from it, the Lord went with you. The Lord went with you, and he's with you now. So let's talk about this lordship thing because it's just more nonsense. I mean, it's, it's more leftover nonsense from the stuff that was so abusive to begin with. Jesus is Lord, period. And when I call upon whom? I call upon the Lord. I can call him Lord, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord, whatever. But Jesus is Lord. And when I call upon him, I am assuming from day one, moment one, I am assuming that he has the power and authority to save me. Implied in calling upon him is that he can do something. So therefore, he must be the Lord God. So this idea that, oh, no, I accidentally made him Savior, but who knows if he's Lord. Now I got to get him to be Lord. And then, okay, now I've got him to be Lord. What if you lose that? How do you know you've lost it? Does he still feel like Lord? I mean, how are you going to get him back? Twelve more Bible studies, three more times at church, six more quiet times? I mean, witness to three more people? How would you get him back to be Lord? Uh, you know, say the words, I submit. Uh, does that do it? I mean, this thing is a fraud. 
this message that you are somehow in Christ, but he's not Lord, and you got to get him to be Lord and then keep him Lord. He is Lord. That's his identity. He is the Lord God, creator of all. He lives in you. And yes, there's a process of learning and growing old attitudes exchanged for new attitudes. But, you know, it's, it's like the idea of putting God first. Well, what is in competition with God? Video games? Oh, if I play less video games, God will be first. Oh, if I don't eat out so much, God will be first. Uh, family, country, hobbies, inter- got to play golf less. If I play golf less, God will be first. It's like Lucy and Ethel in the chocolate factory trying to organize all the chocolates. Get God first. Oh, he fell into second. Get God first. You end up with chocolate all over you. I mean, it's a mess. You don't have to get God first. He is first. He's, he's the creator of all. In him we live and we move and we have our being. We can't help that. It's just who God is. So the moment you stepped out of Adam and you stepped into Christ, you became a lover of God. Uh, Ephesians 6, 24, it says that you have an undying love for Jesus. You can't love Jesus more. You can't, you can't make him first. You can't make him Lord more. He just is. So, you know, that's the kind of truth that sets us free, my friend. And you were under some bondage. You were being abused religiously with some bad doctrine. You got away from it. Then the enemy says, oh, I can't believe you left that church. Who do you think you are leaving that church, leaving that stuff? You know, you, and then you've fallen away, and then God's not really Lord now. See, that's just more deception. It's more lies. It's accusation. Christ is your life, and you're one with him and he thinks the world of you. So I want to put you back on, Denise. Does that, does that help some? Does that make sense, my friend? Absolutely, yes. You hit all of it, and even more. <laughs> so thank you so much. <laughs> well, uh, your good. ministry is amazing. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. So I was going to say, your ministry is amazing, and it really, really, it set me free. Like I, There was like a lot of bondage, so thank you so much. Oh, you bet, Denise. Well, I'm so glad that you're connected with us, and uh you know, reach out and call us anytime. We'd love to hear from you again. Uh, such a great question. You know, I guess that kind of sums it up for us today. The truth is always simple and straightforward, and we try to complicate it, and the enemy tries to get us in that paralysis of analysis. Boy, if I could just inspect, if I could just examine, am I loving enough? Am I making him Lord enough? Am I in his will enough? Am I in fellowship enough? Am I, am I? And you know what the answer to all of that is? Jesus did it. He did it perfectly. No repeat needed.